Hey guys, today I'm going to answer some emails. All right, so I have a bunch of uh, emails, well, messages sent to me from the YouTubes. So I figure I do a little late, late night of vlog. Steph answers emails. All right, let's get to it. Uh, okay, you know, I'm not going to read this whole thing because it's pretty long. Um, this is basically a guy who's been struggling really bad, badly from imposter syndrome. Holy jeez, imposter syndrome. There's even a Wikipedia entry. I feel like everyone at my job is better than me at programming, which is not necessarily a bad thing, or, but it just makes it difficult to have any confidence in the decisions that I sometimes need to take. My question is, did you ever felt this way? Is this normal within the program community, or is this because I don't have a formal background? There's no coder in the world who knows everything. They have their specialties, there might be a particular area where they've just finished a project, working on it for months and, or a year, and they know like the back of their hand. So if they're doing just that, they'll be really good at it. So for example, when I was actively involved in uh, some really high level database work back in the day, I started going deep, deep into database theory, normalizations and optimizations and uh, in terms of indexes and all kinds, of, and went really deep. This is like, what I just mentioned is kind of superficial, but I went really deep into the whole um, database theory and design, and my level of knowledge became extreme for a while. It's been years since that time, and I have to tell you, I can tell you right now, I forget just about all of it. I would, I, I would remember it pretty quickly once I just got back into the saddle again but the point is you may feel intimidated because you're running into people who are who are working right now their, their hands are dirty in that kind of code so to them it's very fresh and so if you haven't been working with that type of coding at that particular moment or in a little while or ever you feel a little nervous oh i don't know i don't know what i'm doing these guys really know what they're doing they really know what they're doing because they're working on that now and the other thing to consider is that once you have your core once you have your basics in terms of programming is concerned something i talk about all the time I like to stress all the time you can just learn whatever you need to learn depending on the job at hand so i wouldn't care too much i wouldn't be so concerned about the fact you may not be aware of a particular a library now or a particular language now and if you're nervous about a decision you have to make in terms of the coding that you're actually going to have to do just do a little bit of research on it do a little research on it uh, google is powerful if you know your core you know your basics you'll be able to answer those basic questions do the research and then uh, if you're still feeling nervous present what you've found and go see your colleagues which is normal and software develop say i'm thinking of doing this this is the solution I suggested. What do you think? That's it. And uh, see what they say. And uh, they may come up with better ideas. They may go, that's cool. They may go, I don't know. I'm not doing this right now. And uh, just go from there. At the end of, of the day, what's the great thing about being a software developer is that your code will work or it doesn't work. Right? It works or it doesn't work. And, you know, as long as the code is clean and simple, easy to update, which is pretty obvious, self-evident, right? you'll be okay. So, yeah, just, just keep working through it. Follow those two steps, as I suggested, and uh, you should be fine. But uh, any, any psychological misgivings, any psychological, uh, emotional uh, hang-ups, if you will, not that this is major, it's a minor thing, really. Uh, don't worry, you just got to work through it through repetition. And the more you give yourself a chance to do work, the more you give yourself a chance to complete projects and to work on projects and solve them, the more your confidence will grow, right? Repetition. All right, what's the next one? Uh, hi, Steph, hope you're having a good day. Question, is there a high-level gaming language that you would recommend studying? I think, um, I don't do much game, I haven't done any game programming except for basic stuff, so, I would suggest that you look at uh, C Sharp and how it's used in the um, Unity gaming engine. So you may want to look at that. You want to look at that. Uh, Unreal Engine apparently works with Mono, which you could use C Sharp. That is what I would take a look at. C Sharp game engine. See how that is. Again, this is not my forte. It's not my strength. So, but that's a good place to start.
Okay, so you have a guy who says, I'm currently doing my comp sci second year at, I won't say the school, and I hate it. I hate it because of the system around it. I feel like it's a waste of time and money. But at the same time, I'm ready. I'm already in the second year. I took a break last year to work on my own projects, similar to uh, X, Y, Z. I won't get into it, uh, but you have to shut it down. I'm back this year, but I still feel this way. Should I drop out and learn programming myself? I consider myself a fast learner. So now, so how do I do it? However, what about not having a degree? How badly does that affect me? I love programming. Okay, you need a degree if you plan on getting into the type of programming where you're going to be working for large organizations that have HR departments, human resources departments. And if they do, then they're going to have sort of set criteria where only extreme experience can get around that set criteria. What's that set criteria? Big companies means they want people with comp sci degrees or some sort of degree. So your second year into it, was it four years, three and a half, four years, depending on how many courses you take on? It's been a while. If you're going into debt for tens and tens of thousands and you think you're just going to be doing stuff on your own or working uh, for small businesses or startups where they don't really care about degrees as much, then I would say don't go into tens and tens of thousands into debt because student loan debt is the worst possible debt you can get because it's non-dischargeable, non-dischargeable in the U.S. and Canada too, where uh, non-dischargeable debt means even if you go bankrupt, you still have that debt around your, uh, around your neck. Student loan debt is the debt you avoid at all costs. So if you're telling me you feel you're not getting out of anything out of university, you're going into debt, you've got another two or three years and what, another 30, 40,000, 50,000 in debt. You think you might just do your own thing because you said you tried to do your own thing, it failed. Well, normal, you, write, you try a project, fails, normally try a project, it fails. If you're looking to get into freelance or build your own projects, then you, don't, you, have, you absolutely don't need a degree at all, it has no, uh, no advantage. But on the other hand, if you think you might want to go work for a large organization, then you would probably need a degree. So you have to look at those two issues. One thing you can do is you could always go back, right? You could always go back. For me, I left university in my second year because my business started to take off. That was one of the reasons. And I couldn't do two things at the same time. But of course, my business was taking off. And in those days, the amount of debt you, you could accrue in university was minimal. It's like uh, the cost of, for up here in Canada, the cost of university is nothing. It's like a few thousand bucks a year. So that was another issue as well. It's not like I was going to go into big debt. At any rate, I had to, pull, I had to make the choice whether to go into business because it was growing or do my career or, or, or finish my degree. And I decided to go into business. And I figured, yeah, one day I'll go back and get back into university. Let me tell you, once you get out there and you sort of leave school, the chance of you going back and completing it, it becomes much more difficult, much more difficult because you sort of left the whole I'm learning and university stage of your life. Of course, if you're successful, then you don't need to go back, right? Uh, yeah, I never went back. Hi, Stefan. I'm a freshman in college looking in multi-platform software development, looking in a multi-platform software development major. Okay, I guess he's, that's what he's taking. The college strongly focuses on C++ and Java. It will also touch base on basic HTML and JavaScript. I greatly enjoy the course and I'm hoping to do software development and possibly someday game development. What suggested languages should I attempt to learn on the side to see more appealing for jobs? Depends on the type of program you want to do. So if you want to do game development, then I would pick languages that are used a lot in game development. Now, it depends what type of game development that you want to do. Uh, if you want to build engines and so forth, you're looking at C++. If uh, you may want to look at the Unity engine and C Sharp, what I would do is I would look around at uh, the job market right now in terms of game developers, if that's what you want to do. And look at the job market and then look at the requirements. Look what the type of programmers are looking for. And that will tell you exactly what languages, which, which frameworks you need to learn. And then what you could do is on the side, you can learn that. So one option, again, you have to check, it might be C-sharp with the Unity engine, I don't know. Maybe it's just diving deeper into C++ if you want to get into low-level game engine building, if there's work for that, and then start writing that kind of C++ code. That's my best advice in terms of, uh, in terms of your question. All right, there's a bunch of other questions, but uh, yeah, I think I won't answer those. All right. 
that's pretty much it. Uh, yeah. Much more to come. I've been uh, checking off a lot of the check boxes, taking care of a lot of work. So time is freeing up for more of these type of vlogs. Ciao, ciao.